Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm here with our public safety team uh, at MPD's 5th District Police Station. Uh, we're also joined by the host council member, Ward 5 Council Member Kenyon McDuffie. Uh, and we are uh, now starting the first week of November. It doesn't feel like it, but we'll take it. Uh, and many people consider this the ramp up to the holiday season. Uh, so we want to be here today to highlight some tips that we want um, people to be mindful of as they go about their holiday shopping and visiting with friends and family. So over the years, we have seen an uptick in online shopping. Uh, and along with that, we have seen an uh, increase in package theft, except last year. Last year, we saw a slight decrease, and we want to continue that trend this year. Uh, we think that there are a few reasons that package thefts dropped last year, uh, but probably the most important one uh, was that our residents have been very proactive in protecting their items. So the chief will go into a little bit more about that. You're also going to hear um, from the U.S. Sp Postal Inspector, Michael Martell, about what the Postal Service uh, sees and recommends. Uh, we also know that D.C. residents are arranging to have their packages delivered on days when they know that someone is home, having items sent directly to their Amazon lockers or UPS stores or post office boxes or other pickup sites. It also helps, we know, um, when neighbors are talking to each other uh, and can work together to bring packages inside once they are delivered. Uh, we also want people to use our private security camera rebate program, which helps residents, businesses, nonprofits, and religious institutions purchase and install security camera systems on their property. As of today, uh, we, uh, we have helped to install 26,000 security cameras throughout D.C. Uh, and we know that these security cameras have also been helpful in a wide range of MPD investigations. So if you're interested, please visit ovsjg.dc.gov uh, under the services tab. Uh, we also want to highlight uh, safe exchange zones. These are located within MPD stations, like the one we're at right here at the 5th uh, District. Uh, and what people do is if you buy something online and agree to meet someone to exchange money or goods, please do it at its safe exchange zones. Um, we, we ask you not to meet up with strangers at their home or at your home or, or a private location. So we want this to be a safe and fun holiday season, uh, and we know working together to make it uh, safe uh, is all of our jobs. So with that, I want to turn to Council Member McDuffie. Thank you, Mayor Bowser. Um, I'm going to keep my remarks fairly brief today. I do want to thank Mayor Bowser, City Administrator Donnie, who Chief Conti, uh, our 5th District Commander, and his entire team for all the work that they've been doing to keep the District of Columbia safe. I want to thank you all for doing this here in Wonderful War 5. I want to recognize our partners in maintaining uh, safe communities. Uh, we've been joined by the Chair of ANC 5D, Jackie Manning, and a host of uh, ANC 5D commissioners. I want to thank them for their partnership and all the civic leadership who have worked with my office and my team on making sure that people are aware of ways to maintain their safety as we approach this holiday season. Uh, the mayor's run down a number of ways that uh, residents can keep themselves safe. Uh, I would encourage residents to take advantage of uh, the safe exchange zones. I would encourage residents to uh, take advantage of the options of uh, the delivery services, whatever your delivery service is, they provide about uh, when best to have packages delivered to your home when you're there, uh, locations in which uh, they can deliver packages that are safest for you and your family, uh, and just really encouraging people to communicate. Uh, if you have questions about uh, some of the ways that you can maintain your safety during the holiday season, keep your packages safe, uh, then reach out uh, to uh, our agencies reach out to your ANC commissioners, reach out to my office, and reach out to your civic leadership. It really must be a partnership. 
uh, to see a successful holiday season. I look forward uh, to celebrating over the course of the holidays, uh, and I also look forward to the continued partnership uh, with Mayor Bowser, uh, Chief Conti, uh, the ANC commissioners, all the wonderful civic leadership, and residents across the District of Columbia so that we can have, yet again, another safe holiday season. Thank you, Mayor Bowser. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, I'm Robert J. Conti III, Chief of Police here in Washington, D.C., and I want to thank everyone for coming. Uh, as the mayor said, we are heading into the holiday season, and just like my family, many families across the district will be doing some online shopping, and that means packages are going to be arriving on doorsteps. These are crimes of opportunity, and we will hold those accountable who engage in criminal behavior in this space. But we need to work together as a community to stop these crimes of opportunity from happening in the first place. You've heard me say it before, have a plan ahead of time. Plans aren't just for big events or things like Halloween. Have a plan for your packages as well before they get delivered. Track the package and sign up for email or text notifications. Ask a family member or neighbor to pick them up. Use a package locker like the Amazon locker at our 6th District Station. Uh, if you live in a building, have a conversation with your building's uh, management about making sure packages stay secure. Beyond having the plan, one of the biggest deterrents is having video cameras on the outside of your home or building. I encourage you all to invest in the mayor's private security camera rebate program. Camera footage plays a critical role in helping us solve cases and hold offenders accountable that choose to engage in criminal behavior. If you already have cameras, take a moment to make sure they are fully operational. That potential evidence is key. Here's a few things for you. Double check that, the, that they have space to record or are linked to the cloud. You'd be surprised how many times we receive camera or we, we attempt to retrieve camera footage and you'll hear the residents say or you'll check and there's no storage left on there. Uh, make sure that they have a clear view and also capture the area leading up to your home, which is also very important because people will oftentimes walk up the, the driveway or walk up the walkway as they approach your home, as they approach your package, and it's also really good to just make sure that the angling of your cameras uh, are correct. If you do happen to get your packages stolen, make sure to file a police report as soon as possible. As Mayor Bowser mentioned, last year we saw a slight decrease in the number of package thefts that we had, but we want to make sure that those offenses are being reported so we are act actually capturing and tracking uh, where these crimes are occurring. You can call 911 and make the report over the phone. You can go to your nearest district police station or you can file the report online at your convenience. If you have footage available, please share that with us when following your police report. And ask your neighbors if they captured any video. The more video in, in any case allows detectives to track down more leads on a case. MPD will continue to allocate resources to reduce robberies and thefts in all neighborhoods uh, across the city. But the last part that I want to mention is the importance of community involvement. Get to know your neighbors, know the cars that usually park on the street, be able to recognize when something doesn't look right. And if you see something, obviously we want you to say something. Call 911 if you see a crime in progress. If you have a tip or video of a crime occurring or something suspicious, please call us 202-727-9099 or text us anonymously at 50411. Together, we can make this a safe holiday season for everyone. I want to turn it over to Postal Inspector, Inspector Michael Martell, who can share some more tips about what you can do at home. Uh, thank you, Chief Conti. Thank you, Mayor Bowser. And thank you to Congressman McDuffie for the invitation to be here today and share some prevention tips with everybody here. Uh, I want to first highlight the strong relationship the Postal Inspection Service has with the Metropolitan Police Department and we will be supporting them moving forward with any investigations this holiday season. Um, to start off, it's important that I don't want anybody to become a victim of parcel theft or package theft to begin with. So really preventing is, is, is the name of the game here today. Um, so tracking your package is one of the primary ways to help prevent items of value from sitting on your front porch. The Postal Service provides a service called informed delivery you can sign up for free at usps.com. 
This is a service that provides you with images of incoming pieces of mail, as well as information about incoming and even outbound parcels. Other tips are, of course, you can always have your neighbor pick up parcels off your doorstep. You can log on to the Postal Service's website and actually, with a service called Parcel Intercept, you can update delivery locations and notifications and leave special delivery instructions to your letter carrier. Also, there is a number of ways to follow up after the fact. Of course, notify any parcel theft to the Metropolitan Police Department, and if it was delivered via United States Postal Service, reach out to the Postal Inspection Service at USPIS.gov or by calling 1-877-876-2455. Thank you. Thank you. That's right okay, um, we have time for a few questions. Any questions? Go ahead. So, oh, okay. So we have a man that told us that he's afraid to leave his house. This is after the sh like the shooting and the gunshots that were heard this morning. And so when you look at crime data, it actually it's showing a decline. But there's a lot of perception of increased crime in this city. And what's being done in like at, at the like what's being done in the public and what's not being told to these people about what's going on here in the district. And I do have a follow up question after. Yeah, so I, I do think we we certainly tell people what's going on here in the city. I was at a press conference yesterday talking about what's happening in the city. Last week, the mayor did a uh, a breakfast with the council where we gave the city an update. I think the thing that we are dealing with here is the perception and fear of crime. So as you indicated, we are seeing decreases in crime. The, the offense or the incident that you're talking about uh, this morning where shots were fired, again, someone firing shots in the air uh, at at a building location, our officers responded. They made two arrests. They recovered a firearm. So our police officers are strategically placed where we need them so that they can accurately and timely respond to crimes when they occur and make arrests. And we're doing that, and we're going to keep on doing that. Are we where we want to be? No. We want to see zero crime in the city. We want to see zero homicides. Any one robbery, any one sounds of gunshot is one too many. But that just is, it. again, it's an indication, the crime stats are an indication of where we're going. And right now, as we continue to tell the public about these things, we want to make sure that we are also addressing the real fears that people have. Gotcha. And so a follow-up question to that is there's a lot of perceived, I guess, fear or uh, and heightened crime in the city. What is the strategy and, and what are you guys planning? What, what more is the, right. the department so trying to do? Let's talk about that. There's heightened and perceived fear across our nation right now. In every county surrounding Washington, D.C., there's a heightened perceived fear of crime in every jurisdiction around Washington, D.C., to include Washington, D.C. and every other major city. So I think it's more than a conversation about just Washington, D.C. It's really a national discussion in this space about how people feel. When we are putting images out, and we certainly do that, and we're letting the public know about some of the horrible things that happen all across our country, certainly those things increase the fear of crime. And again, if it happened outside your doorstep, that's real for you. So we want to make sure that people have an accurate account of what the numbers are, but also make sure that we continue to work with community members to let them, to let them know where things are occurring and really help to try to tamper down some of the fear that people are experiencing by letting them know arrests are being made. Yesterday we announced the arrest of a double homicide that occurred over in the 7th District. We arrested uh, a juvenile involved in the shooting of the Washington Commanders player. We arrested the two individuals that, are, that were firing a firearm this morning. So those things are happening, but there's also a significant amount of police work that's going into investigations to hold people accountable. Next question. Thank you. Yep. Mark? Today. Yeah. Can you tell us what kind of success you've been having in making arrests uh, for porch pirates, for package thefts? And are you, you called them a crime of opportunity. Yeah. Do you think that these are just random people, or, do you, or is there any evidence that there's some coordination there? there you know, we see this with the catalytic converters, right? Yeah. Is, is, is there anything coordinated going on here, G groups of people doing this, or is it just simply somebody sees a package and it's opportunistic and they make off with it i think it's probably a little bit of both mark to be quite honest with you uh, sure you have the random one-offs and i mean you, you can you can go down any street any time and sometimes see you know two or three packages piled up and that's just a crime in, of opportunity but certainly there are like-minded people out here who think that this is an opportunity and we know that this this time of year every year uh, we start to see an increase in the space again part of the reason why we're out here is to make sure that community 
community members are aware, to her point, make sure that communities are aware of some of the some of the things that we've seen historically and how we can address those things so that we're not seeing repeat offenses. Data on arrests? No, I don't have any data on arrests specifically, Mark, but I can tell you that, you know, again, it's, it's a crime and opportunity. It happens that quick, and where we do have arrests, where they do occur is because we have good video footage that helps us to make those arrests. We'll put an image out uh, like we did in the commander shooting and other cases where people are able to say, hey, that's Mike, or that's Jim, or that's John, and that helps the police department to make a better case uh, with our U.S. attorney partners. Past holiday shopping seasons, yeah. we've seen MPD deploy cadets and reserve officers in the shopping districts. Are we going to see that this holiday season as well? Yeah, you can add to that uh, in addition to the police recruits. Uh, it'll be over 150 police recruits, but also our 100 police cadets uh, will be hitting the streets of the District of Columbia uh, in communities uh, all across the different wards to ensure that we have a safe holiday season. DC criminal code and are you doing anything to prevent it from changing if so what why am I I'm not opposed to changing the DC criminal code there are parts of the criminal code that I'm opposed to uh, overall I think the mayor and I have both been on record about that there are over 90 percent of the things that are in there that absolutely need to be changed for example uh, when I was a kid playing ball in the street uh, Back when I was a kid, I didn't realize that was a crime, but it's still on our books. It's not enforced, but it is in the criminal code. However, there are also other things that are in there uh, with respect to robberies and burglaries that I think impact everyday citizens. And anything that would suggest or uh, someone thinks that this is a good idea to um, reduce accountability, in my view, if there's a lessening of a penalty, uh, I think that that's problematic, especially as the, the, the reporter just mentioned a few minutes ago, when you talk about people who have a real fear of crime. I don't think that you have a conversation about real fear of crime and you follow that with reduction in penalties. Uh, that just does not gel for me as the police chief. Uh, I've been in this city. Uh, I've been a police officer here for over 30 years. I talk to victims and I talk to citizens all across the city. And the one thing that I have not heard from residents is, hey, chief, uh, less accountability, uh, reduced penalties. I have not heard that from residents who really care about the safety and security of the city. Mayor Bowser, how do you feel about this? I've already is um, I've already talked about and I've sent a letter to the council about what I think needs to change. Uh, my concerns uh, chiefly fall into three buckets. Like the chief, I'm concerned about reducing penalties for violent crime. When I say that, I'm talking about murder, uh, robbery with a gun, rape, all of well, carjacking. These issues, we have to make sure that they're real clear. Uh, there's a real clear message um, coming from the city that we won't tolerate this lawlessness. We're going to do everything that we can to work people to make with people to make sure they have opportunities not to commit crime. Uh, but there has to be accountability. I'm also uh, concerned that there are new policies um, that have been added here that I think are better in a standalone bill. Uh, and so let's deal with the things that are making the, the code more contemporary, but deal with new policies with their own hearing, with their own bill, with their own vote. Uh, and that includes the expansion of the Second Look Act, um, which the council moved previously for juvenile offenders. Uh, and with this update to the code, they expanded um, to offenders of all ages. Uh, so I just think that that is a policy change that could have an impact on public safety that should have its own hearing uh, and its own vote. Similarly, uh, this bill would make it so that any misdemeanor uh, would be a jury demandable trial. Uh, right now, uh, though, many of those cases uh, are tried before a judge. Uh, and in a perfect world where we had as many judges uh, as, as we could pay for, uh, that, that might work. But it doesn't work with our system where we rely on the federal government to send us judges in the federal system. Uh, and I'm especially concerned now, coming out of COVID, that our courts have to catch up. 
They're experiencing a vacancy crisis right now. Uh, and we haven't even begun to talk about the impact on D.C. residents who get called, will be called as jurors in those trials. I think the U.S. attorney said expect to, instead of getting two calls for jury service in a year or two years to get four. So it could double um, the demand on our residents as well. So I think that there's some work for us to do between first uh, and second reading. I was disappointed that there wasn't more discussion at the council when they took this big vote, um, but I think there's there's time to work on it. said that the team could be sold. Uh, your thoughts on what this means for the potential of a, a new stadium coming to the district or other facilities? Well, I talked about this yesterday. Um, and I think that we're slowly getting some confirmation from the team. We still don't know exactly what their news means and that they've hired a broker or some kind of a representative to work on transactions. Uh, so I'm not uh, sure what that, that means. Um, but we do know one of the uh, impediments to the command uh, there have been many, but one has been uh, the ownership. So it looks like uh, there's going to be some change there. Yes. Another question for Councilmember McDuffie. Uh-huh. Uh, Councilmember, on the criminal code, you voted in favor of the criminal code. The mayor just laid it out. There was very little discussion on the dais about this. She's expressed her concerns that are echoed by the chief judge, the U.S. Attorney's Office, particularly the trials for misdemeanor. Do you have any plans to introduce any legislation that would carve out any of these items and set them aside as the mayor has indicated she would like to see done? Or are you prepared to just vote again for the bill as is? Thank you for the question, Mark. And I want to thank the mayor for her uh, comments and the chief for his comments and his work throughout the course of uh, the criminal code uh, rewrite process. And it's been just that, a process that has taken place over the course of years with the commission coming up with recommendations, with the committee on judiciary chaired by Charles Allen holding hearings that ultimately got us to the point where we made a vote on Tuesday. Uh, of the people who, who did say something, uh, I was one of the council members who actually asked questions uh, on Tuesday. And my questions uh, were really regarding what has happened since the committee uh, received the recommendations from the commission and the course of the comments by the United States Attorney's Office, the Metropolitan Police Department, the mayor, the executive, uh, as well as the Public Defender Service. Uh, I asked about uh, the Office of the Attorney General. There are a number of partners who are charged with the duty of keeping our public safe as much as I would like to get to 100% consensus, I'm not sure that we're going to be able to achieve that. Uh, what I do know uh, is that we had the first vote. Uh, there will be a second vote, and, and my uh, course of action is going to be to try to get uh, additional answers to some of the questions that I raised on the dais on Tuesday uh, to see that we can get to any uh, heightened consensus around uh, the second vote that comes up in a couple of weeks. And so uh, I think the ultimate goal, which I think we all share, we being the executive, the council, and our federal partners, is to pass a bill that uh, enhances public safety in the District of Columbia, as well as protects uh, our residents and enhances justice. And ultimately, I'm going to support the bill if I believe that it does that. So can I just follow up specifically on the misdemeanor trial option. Do you support that? Do you support, as it's written, expanding the opportunity for trials, jury trials for people facing misdemeanor jail time? Uh, I think it's important, Mark, to make sure that the public has some context. Uh, this isn't unprecedented. In fact, uh, this used to be the case that these types of trials were uh, jury demandable. Uh, I think it's not a question of whether or not um, it should happen. It's a matter of how it happens. Uh, I think having the ability to demand a jury trial is an important aspect of our criminal justice system, uh, but it only works optimally if the courts have the resources to make sure that they can execute. And so the conversations with um, Superior Court Chief Judge Anita Josie Heron and her designee to make sure that the time frame is such that it only happens once the resources that the court needs are in place to make sure that it can be administered in a way that enhances public safety and justice. I have a follow-up for Mr. Martell from the Postal Service. Yep. 
could, could you update us and tell us kind of how it plays into this season, the attacks and thefts that we've seen on postal workers in our region, uh, apparently being targeted for the postal keys to the mailboxes. We know there had been some arrests, but then there were some more occurrences. Just how does that play into holiday season and any update you can give us on that? Well, I wouldn't say that the theft of keys has anything to do with the theft of parcels from everybody's front porches. That would be a, a completely separate issue. Um, and as far as robberies of postal service letter carriers goes, uh, that is, those are active and ongoing investigations here in the Washington Division, and they are priority cases for us. And of course, employee safety is paramount, and that's of course highlighted in the fact that we're still offering a reward of up to $50,000 for information leading to the identification, arrest, and subsequent prosecution of those involved. My question is actually for Chief Conti. I do want to, as a native Washingtonian and a resident of Ward 5, I do want to commend the police department, especially in 5D. Although we know your job is hard, we know you all can't do it alone, we understand what you're up against. So as a native Washingtonian and a resident of Ward 5 and just a resident of Washington, D.C., I want to say thank you. Thank My you. question is actually into the question at hand, um, the theft prevention. We've had the same assailant on our local residential block stealing packages. We've reported this several times to um, the police department with the help of Kenya McDuffie's office being directly impacted, um, directly talking to the constituents. And we've been told that because these are petty theft crimes with less than $1,000, they're not going to... And, and so to speak, waste resources. And I get that there is more uh, permanent resources uh, associated with other crimes that are going on in the district, but it's the power of numbers. If we have multiple residents getting packages stolen from the same individual, how do we go to fix this problem? How do we fix this problem going forward? So the commander and the captain right here, they fix the problem. Now, we can arrest them, and we should be doing that. Now, what happened in terms of the value part and whether or not that case is going to move forward then becomes the question. But we can't get there until this person has been placed under arrest. So I'm going to ask that you uh, connect with them. If, it sounds like we know who this person is. And if we know who this person is, you know, maybe there's some evidence or something. But, yeah, that's really an offline conversation that, that that can be handled. We should be taking care of that. And then we have to advocate together to really kind of push that case forward to make sure that it gets prosecuted and the accountability piece happens. But it starts with us making the arrest. Okay, thank you. Okay, last question. Chief, um, we hear that a lot. Hear what a lot? A lot. Essentially that the police, this is a low priority crime in terms of in terms of police officers. And of course, the, the idea is that, you know, people are supposed to talk about cameras and things like that and report it. But given the fact that you have homicides, et cetera, is it a low priority crime? I think it depends on, on, on where you are and who you are, Sam. You've heard me say before, people respond differently depending on their proximity to the pain. So if you if it's your package is stolen, I mean, that that's like a homicide, like a robbery, like everything else that happens in a different community. And we see that, you know, in some communities, while they might not have violent crime issues, a car speeding up the street is like the issue for that particular community. So I don't think we box ourselves in to say, hey, you know, yeah, just violent crime kind of thing. Uh, we are a multi-disciplined uh, police department with the ability to focus on all things now. Arresting the person who's responsible for a package theft that happens that quickly, seeing that case to the system, and ultimately the outcome that we want to see, meaning that there are meaningful consequences associated with that, that's kind of a, that's a related conversation, but I want to make sure on our side that we're doing our part. And that is when we have citizens coming forward, sharing information for us, that those people, at least through the lens of the Metropolitan Police Department, that we take that first step to apprehend those individuals, and then we work together to advocate for what the outcome is going to be. Thank you. Mayor, a question for you as well. Um, you were saying basically mm -hmm. that you uh, don't support uh, basically uh, – a jury trial if you're facing jail time if it's a misdemeanor you know I guess it's like if you are facing less than six months in jail uh, mayor I understand they're down like 20 judges at DC Superior Court what has the city done to say hey we need more judges 
Um, we've done a lot, Sam, in terms of I can't recount the number of conversations or meetings that we've had at the White House, calls that we've had with the Congress. Um, but keep in mind the gridlock that we see on the federal level with legislation coming out of the Congress. And that just will give you some indication of what we're up against, which is why I am, uh, I feel so strongly about not giving more work to the courts that are already down judges and their caseloads are up and they haven't caught up from COVID even on the felony trials. So that, that's my concern. And so then people will tell me, well, this is not going to happen till 2030. Well, why are you voting on it now, especially since this new policy that we can consider later? Why are you insinuating that the courts have said, okay, we can work with that? They haven't said that. What they said is that we have to have more judges. So I just want to be real clear uh, to, to people who ask me and the chief every single day, like the first question you heard, we're scared in our communities. I was at a community meeting in Ward 7 where a lady told me she didn't want to get on the bus. We can't have our seniors not want to get on the bus. So we have to be real clear about the message that, that we're sending. Yes, of course, we want our code to be fair and predictable. We want to get rid of all the contradictions. We want to get rid of the 100-year-old lines that make no sense in 2022. We want to do all of that. But if we're going to have new policies, um, I appreciate the aspirational goal of it, but if it's not really going to happen because we don't have the resources, we should be honest and say so. And that is my honest assessment. Okay. Yep. Oh. Does it concern you the appearance of this building? For the people who work here every day, who risk their lives every day, that this is where they come to work. And, I mean, you can see the appearance and the neighbors who come by it. What message does it send that you can't even put a coat of paint on the outside of this well, building? Well, we could put a coat of paint on it, and we should put a coat of paint on it. Uh, and more than that, Mark, we should. And it's it has been something that's on... Um, my list of capital investments along a lot of competing investments. Um, several years ago, we made some improvements inside the stations to, to locker rooms and the like, but most of our police stations need a major capital investment. Uh, so I am happy when we're doing our budget engagement forms for all the people in the district to say, we want to invest in fixing our police stations and then we'll be able to do it. All right, thank you everybody.